各位观众朋友们，大家好啊！今天我来带大家以无人机的视角和第一视角来看一看位于纽约州首府奥尔巴尼市哈德逊河畔的美国现存唯一的护航驱逐舰的博物馆舰——斯莱特号。斯莱特号护航驱逐舰呢？它被收录在国家史迹名录的里面。它同时也是美国国家历史名胜，也就是国家历史地标。斯莱特号护航驱逐舰，它是在一九四四年五月一日开始服役，它服役到了二战后，也就是一九四七年的九月二十六日。后来，斯莱特号这个护航驱逐舰呢？就跑到希腊去服役去了。他在一九五一年三月一日至一九九一年七月五日之间，他是在希腊海军服役的阿伊托斯号。后来斯莱特号在希腊海军退役后，就回到了美国。他在跨越大西洋的时候呢，有百分之五十的概率会沉没，但是他最后回到了美国，并最后来到了纽约州的哈德逊河畔，在这里。作为一个博物馆舰对外开放，也就是现在的斯莱特号。斯莱特号在二零一二年的三月二日成为了国家史迹地标。斯莱特号护航驱逐舰它是一个非常小的军舰，但是这么小的军舰它也是在大洋深处航行的，所以它经历过许许多多非常凶险的情况，然后。也是非常颠簸的，也是在这个大洋中间遇到大风大浪的时候，啊，非常颠簸。所以，海员在这个驱逐舰里面的生活是最为艰苦的，啊，比之前我们看的战列舰啊、航空母舰啊都要艰苦多了。我们在这个军舰里面也可以感受一下当时二战时候的美军战士们他们生活的这个环境。今天外面的气温非常热啊，然后这个船里面当然也是不会安装空调的，所以在这种炎热的这个夏日里，啊，这个船里面的温度也是非常非常高的。我的手机在录视频的时候有三次热的都关机了。斯莱特号护航驱逐舰在二战中主要在大西洋上服役，它在。整个这个生涯中，共执行了五次这个护航任务，从这个这个美国东海岸到英国，执行了这个护航任务啊。在一九四五年六月的时候，也是太平洋战争接近尾声的时候，斯莱特号护航驱逐舰就来到了太平洋战场。在太平洋战场，他也执行了诸次护航任务，然后他就回到了美国退役。我在这天拍无人机的视频和我第一视角的视频不是同一个时间段拍的，大家应该也能从这个太阳高度的这个角度来看出区别来哈。我拍无人机的时候是下午三四点钟的时候拍的，然后我第一视角的。是我中午拍的，中午也是这一天最热的时候，所以我在奥尔巴尼，在这个纽约上州的纽约州州府，竟然是遇到了这一年中最热的时候的一天的这个气温。大家眼前看到的就是奥尔巴尼市的市中心，这是一个非常整洁，也非常有设计感的。小城市，然后斯莱特号护航驱逐舰呢，它就停泊在这个世界著名的哈德逊河上。现在我的无人机准备降落，之后我带大家以第一视角去看一下这个护航驱逐舰。过来，你锁车，你锁车，来。大家好，今天我们来到了位于纽约州奥尔巴尼市的 USS Slater。眼前大家看到的就是斯莱特号护航驱逐舰的舰尾
，这个建委上也有一个旗杆。你就承认吧，你就你是很喜欢。今天是我第二次来到纽约州州府奥尔巴尼市，但是是第一次来这个护航驱逐舰，因为我上一次来的时候根本就不知道这个地方有一个护航驱逐舰，只知道这个地方是纽约州州府。这个纽约州州府的那个帝国广场也是设计的非常好看，建议大家来纽约州玩的时候不要错过奥尔巴尼市。这个军舰现在是上着迷彩的，然后可以在这个地方看到它这个后面的这个，应该是反潜的这个这个、深水炸弹。这个军舰的迷彩是在二零一四年涂装的，所以大家如果是在二零一四年以前来的时候呢，这个军舰就是纯灰色的，就没有现在的这个迷彩。然后大家看一下介绍牌。在那个小房子里买票，我录一下。走去买票，去那个小房子里买。哪个小房子？走，咱们进小房子里买票去。这个是美国现存的唯一的护航驱逐舰，史斯莱特号，也也叫史莱特号 ，USS Slater。刚才就是这个讲解员给我们讲解了一下斯莱特号这个涂装的。就是 camouflage 的这个意义啊，然后我们现在就穿过这个桥，准备上舰了。好，我们现在终于来到了位于纽约州奥尔巴尼市的斯莱特号。在斯莱特号上，我们也可以感受一下这个美国现存唯一的护航驱逐舰的样貌。不知道你们从视频里的感觉是什么样的，反正我第一视角感觉呢。这个驱逐舰真的好小。
access points to the engine rooms below decks. Uh -huh. There's four of these on the ship, because there's four compartments. They're all uh, sealed so that if one of these compartments were to go down, you're not going to lose the rest of all the compartments. So that's your only that's your, that's your only way in there, and that's your only way out as well. Oh, only in there, okay. Yep, only way in there. Yep. One way in, one way out. Same as New USS New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so as we're going to go in here, this is the galley, all right? This is the kitchen of the ship. Yeah. So keep in mind as we walk in here, this ship had a complement of 216 crew. And this is where all the meals are made from the ship. Wow. The flush mounts. Yeah, so um sailors. They make the over here? Those are coppers, okay? That's where your soups, your stews, the addition they brew coffee there, okay? The only thing before you the ship's right on coffee, not this one. Okay, the sailors. They drink coffee. Uh yes, okay. Yep. Behind you there, that refrigerator back in the day would have been a bright on. Uh, to make us give or take a hundred loaves of bread a day. It's like sandpaper, okay? You take your potatoes, throw them in there, you just have to make sure they don't turn into mashed potatoes. <laughs> um, everything here works, mind you. Brittle, stove top, oven, all this stuff. Oh, thank you. Hello. 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 Next, the, uh, a couple things to note before we go on here. These holes, that's your only form of ventilation in here, okay? That's why it's so muggy in here. Imagine if everything was running. It would be really hot. Yeah, it gets up for so long. It's not nice. Okay. Okay. Oh, 反前的弹药库 <laughs> Is there a rail? On the rail? Of course! On the rail or what? Oh, that's, that's like a duck, but yeah. It's, I just duck, okay, yeah. yeah. That's for the three inch gun? No, no, yeah, so yeah, yeah. this is your three inch gun. This yeah. is your, th uh, your three inch shell. And this is your fuse type. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this here is your air burst, okay? See if we're hitting planes. On top of that, you have um, your high explosive made for hitting shores, mm -hmm. your armor piercing for hitting enemy ships, and then illumination with your shooter for the nice sky, and it lights up the ocean to save down. Okay. 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 Okay.
Um, this here's this here's a fuse timer for the gun. This is how you set the amount of seconds to which it'll explode. It's helpful with things like air bursts, so you can time when the thing's gonna explode. Uh huh. So you take your round, chuck through here. Reach is gonna close. This here is your vertical control. This is your trainer. Wow. And inside is your train. That's your focus on. Then you fire it with the, uh, the trigger here, and the shell from the round will actually come out here. Come out here. It'll be red hot. It'll bounce around if you don't deal with it, and it will bang from here. So you have a guy, big white asbestos blocks. Takes the round and he throws it over the side. It's got the most important round because again, these rounds actually cause us to damage and go with problems. 这个甲板上真的是非常非常热，然后刚才我真的没想到我的手机竟然热的报警，然后我就关机了，关机之后重新启动，然后接着录，所以有一段他的讲解我就没有录下去，这也是没办法啊。现在我们就来到了这个军官的宿舍的地方，这个地方也是比较狭小啊，但是比起他们下面的那个。普通船员的 bursting 那就好多了。So on top of your dining here, what else do you think is a suit? All right. Uh huh. This is the ward room. There's also another room. 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 To abort his valiant efforts, they gave him his own ship and his name. So, in a weird twist of fate, his uh, so he 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 and all that stuff right here. So how they they can eat with the blood or something? Like What's up? Yeah, what the people gonna eat here and surgery here, right? Like the people that both eat food and surgery in the same room, right? Yep. Like, Just I mean. You're not eating when they're doing the surgery. Yeah, that's what I, what I, I thought. But, like, but yeah. yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it's a, it's pretty multi-purpose. So yeah. it's like eat with blood. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> Just yourself as you come down. Yeah. Right. I'm going to I'm going on sideways. It's a burst when you hurt. Yeah, yeah, so uh, this is the nice contrast to the to what was up above, right? This is the cruise mess. Uh huh. So this ship would have been divided into five divisions, okay? Thirty to forty guys each, and one at a time. These divisions will come in here, grab their food, and just sit down and eat really quick because first off, they have to get up and get back to work really fast. Mm -hmm. On top of that, the next division wants to come in here as well, so they kind of want to speed things up. A Behind you guys here, these bunks, these six bunks, are for those four cooks and two bakers I was explaining before. If you have any problems with the food or anything like that, you can give them your peace of mind. I wouldn't. I don't put the hand that feeds me. It's just a personal thing, but you know, you do you. Hello here. You look at this. The hash. 
These are access points into the diesel fuel. The bolted slit on the gas escapes. If you go down there and do maintenance on anything, that's how you're doing it. Okay. okay. On top of that, that there is a burp valve. So, diesel fuel in the ship, you know, it builds up gas. And so we have to relieve that gas <laughs> or else it could cause problems with the hull of the ship. Yeah. So to do that, we have this we have this burp valve here. It literally takes that excess gas and it burps it. Unfortunately, the Navy doesn't want to spend too much money and they don't want to put a pipe all the way up to the top of the ship. So it literally burps that excess gas right in the crew's faces. Oh no. I'm very, very sorry folks, you're not getting the authentic tour, all right? You're missing three things in the ship. Or a pilot crashes and he survives, okay? We're gonna take them, we're gonna bring them aboard the ship, we're gonna move them by hand. That's these. Yeah. We treat as one of our own, we treat them well, right? So that's, you know, we give them a good, we give them good, uh, good treatment. Alright, so let's move over here. Okay. Thank you. This year is full of birthday. things we move on here. Um, these vests, these are all of crew who serve on the ship. And on these straps here, these are uh, volunteers who have since passed away. And it's our way of memory for the thing on the surface. So a couple things in this room, okay? Behind you there, you see like below you there, those are foot lockers, okay? Not all ships had foot lockers, in fact a lot of them just had a fourth wall. But we don't need the extra bulk because we're not hot water. So in here we would have all of our necessities that are put in there. Um I'm just gonna make sure it's all tidy or else they're all just full. Okay. On top of that, there is a certain hierarchy with these bugs, okay? Look. The top bug is the best, those bugs are the worst. For one, these sailors are not chosen for their version of sea sickness, okay? These guys are from Sometimes from very rural areas, they ne they've never seen an ocean before, and now they're thrust into a life of now being on a ship for multiple months at a time. These guys are going to get seasick, and, and seasick doesn't stop until you really get off the ship. So, it's going to suck. If a guy up on the top bunk, he needs to throw up because he's seasick, and you're one of these lower guys, oh, mm -hmm. too bad. Okay, that, it, just, it is what it is. You're going to have to deal with it. On top of that, if you need to get in here, if you need to get into this footlocker here, and this guy, he's trying to sleep, and he's strapped in, and it's two in the morning, and he just wants to get some shut eye before his next shift, it doesn't matter, okay? I'm picking him up, I'm getting into my stuff. Nah. Yeah, so being the lowest bunk was always the worst, all right? Yeah. As you look around, you'll see these hatches and, and doorways here. They have a, They have a letter on them. When certain conditions are met, these hatches are closed, okay? The idea is that this place is supposed to be watertight. If one of these compartments around us goes down, we're not losing the entire ship because of it. So because of this, during battle, let's say all of these hatches are closed, our only escape from this room in case of a fire or a flood is that escape hatch right there. Wow. Uh -huh. It's a very, very small. This one? Yeah. Wow. It's very, very small. My opinion about it is, I think the motivation of death will motivate any man to get out of hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you have to imagine, if there's, if there's 30 guys in here and there's a fire or a flood, that's your only way out. You guys are trying to get out of, like, like scrambling, okay? It's a very dangerous situation. As we walk through here, this is here's that reefer room I was explaining to you about. So to give you more of a visual reference as to how these mess cooks, like how they, how they did their business, the mess cooks would come all the way down there and into the refrigerators and they'd grab big boxes of food. And then they'd come up here, they'd go out into the galley up above, and then they would they would bring the food to them, okay? okay. The cooks would make the food, and it would be subsequently brought all the way down here, all down here in the cruise mess. They'd be doing this for, the, for like a full four hours. It was a lot of hard manual labor, okay? On top of that, the cooks also made the scullery, okay? This is basically like a dishwashing station. You store your mess trays in there, and it cleans them up. 
but they're essentially they're essentially the dishwashers and all the all the menial tasks on the ship. Okay. Okay. So we got One long piece of water over here. It's nice, fresh water. Very good. Oh, okay. Thank you. There's some more water up above as well if you need any. But um, yes, yeah, so we're going to go to the superstructure now. This is where the captain is. This is where the radio room is. This is where all the, all the radar and, and, and the ship steering is, okay? So we're going to go up here. There's a couple of fans on the ship that like in the internals of the ship that actually suck air out and bring new air in. That's the most you have. It's it's not it's not great to be on the It's the exact opposite if they were in, let's say, the Arctic, right? It's gonna be super cold because again it's gonna absorb that blackness. It's very bad to be in the extremes on the Yeah, I got you. Yeah, so if you guys are following me, we're gonna go up here. Honestly, I'm prepared for the, for the first conditions out there, and um, it ends up very badly for them. So, the guys on the Slater are very, very lucky to have Marcel Long. Wow. On top of that, uh, this here is the yeoman's office, okay? The yeoman issued pay to all the sailors aboard the ship. Every sailor was paid in paper money. Uh huh. These guys are 19, 20 years old. They have nothing better to do on this ship, okay? It's in the middle of the ocean. There is nothing else to do except gamble your money away or spend it at the ship's store. So what these guys are going to do is they're going to go behind you, they're going to see those gun tubs. They're going to go into those gun tubs there, and they're literally going to shoot crabs, they're going to play dice. And uh, as long as they're hidden in there, they're not going to get caught, and so they're, they're not going to get any repercussions. They're just going to gamble all their money. Wow. On top of that, that, there's that radio room I was explaining to you beforehand. Okay. Again, that's fully functional, and um, everything in there works. Uh, so, you hear that if you hear those dots and dashes in there, that's the Morse code, okay? It's essentially an alphabet. And so, what you do is you, you're, you're, listening, you're listening to that radio call sign I was talking about, NCYF, and then you're getting this message, okay, if you want to pass this around. Basically, um, what it is, it's like, it's, it's like uh, it's just a bunch of hard jargon, okay? Oh, yeah. yeah, here, if you want to pass that around. But basically, it's like a bunch of argon jars, and you can't read it. But what you do is you give it to your officer. Your officer goes into a closet in that room, in the room there, and that closet it's like a it's like a typewriter, but it has like a bunch of decoding technology, like like cipher wheels and stuff. And so he's able to decipher the, the message. That Morse uh, code, Morse code, or not? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's Morse code. But it was very, very top secret. Okay, the stuff was kept 
up under wraps because if any enlisted or any anybody else were to know about this, the enemy could actually get a huge tactical and strategical advantage over everything we did. So um, if any enlisted were to know about this thing, um, they would actually be discharged immediately. Here okay, we're gonna go up here. Just watch your head as you come up here. There, 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 there's padding. It doesn't help, okay? If you guys want to look around, yeah. take a, yeah. of course, you guys can take a quick look at everything else and then come up here. Okay. Yeah, that's your radar. That's the CICS, the radar. Oh, CIC. Come back information center. CIC. Philippine Sea. Destroyers, okay, You back shoulder. Hand draw them. This is the most difficult. And then if you see those little boards, those are your plotting tables, okay? That's how you would, you, you, would, you would plot where the enemy and friendlies are on that board. And then if you look at the phones all around here, they're all sound-powered telephones. You need to rely on them a lot because the captain isn't around here, okay? The captain's actually above us. He's in the flying room. It's this open-top area where he can actually see all around us. And he's a tactical overview of everything. So he's here, he's taught he's up above, he's talking with us down below. And he's basically just relaying orders to everybody else because he knows exactly what's going on and we don't. On top of that, if you look at that look over there, that, that thing over there, that's a dead reckoning tracer. It's like an early form of GPS. Essentially what it does is it, it tracks where your where your ship is, and as the ship moves around and turns, it'll actually account for that and it'll tell you where the ship has gone. The only exception to this is it doesn't account for wind, it doesn't account for current. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done. Over here, it's the throttle housing. Alright, this is where you have your steering and you have your throttle. So you guys want to come in here? Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, so uh, this is where you have your uh, this is where you have your steering and your throttle. Okay. Keep in mind as I'm talking about all the things here, these portholes during nighttime or during battle they'd all be closed. So uh -huh. you're entirely relying on the captain above us to relay all the stuff. Steering, the right thing controls the steering of the ship, okay? Um, but the throttle doesn't. The issue with the throttle is if we were to control the throttle here ourselves, we wouldn't be able to know how much energy output is going below down to the engines, or down to the generator. Um, the thing, so, like, if we were to use too much energy, it could actually force the generators to explode and then we disable the whole ship. Um, so, we don't want that to happen. So, we have this. We have to try to coordinate the guys in the end. So we're going to go third speed here. And if you guys look at each side here, if you see the black arrow, that's the engine. That's where the engine is top. So, so we're going to go on third speed. We're going to hit this. We're going to send a signal below to the engine room. You'll hear this loud, blaring signal that will wake them up. Okay. And so they'll get. They'll see that it's actually been, the speed's been changed to third speed. So they're going to match us. And then they'll do everything in their power to reduce the power output, so it's not using too much power. This this sends the signal down. It sounds like a loud noise down. Yeah. And they they have the same exact thing below decks. It sends a signal back up to us, telling them we've got the order. Okay. On top of that. Yep. Over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so fun. I love it. On top of that, you also have uh, some navigation here. Okay, this here's your magnetic compass. These metal balls they align the compass to true north. They, it's a lot more effective than this gyroscopic compass. The only thing is it relies on power. So if the power were to go out, you're relying on the gyroscopic compass. It's not as effective. And on top of that, if this thing goes too far north, the compass, it doesn't work. It will just start spinning. So, this is kind of a bad compass, but it's a backup, okay? It's made just in case that this were to go down. It's, it, it, it does its job. Behind you, those are real 50 cal browning machine guns. Yep. So, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you guys know about kamikaze planes. You guys know about yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, so the, the suicide planes. So on top of that, with the kamikaze planes, another big issue is uh, kamikaze boats. They're, they're the same idea. It's these boats that are filled with explosives that are made to just run into a ship and explode. The issue with these kamikaze boats is if you look at all of the guns on this ship, they all aim up. They're made for more or less fighting aircraft and other targets on the surface. They're not made for fighting things smaller than this, smaller than this. So, the issue is if one of these ships were to get too close, it could actually it would be able to fire it. So, Marcel Blanc, seeing this issue, he actually got these 50 cal brownings and put them on the sides here. And uh, now we have a way to aim down and attack these guys just in case. As we move out here, you guys want to get there? Alright, so let's move right now. <laughs> I'm here. Yep. This is the signal bridge. So, for one, um, so we, so we want to talk to other ships in the convoy here. The issue is we don't want to send out any radio signals. We send out any radio signals to get you over during the U boats and. Uh, even like Japanese aircraft and stuff like that, they can actually come attack us. So the idea is that we're going to be radio silent, okay? We're not going to use our radio. So to avoid using the radio, how we're going to communicate with our ships to the convoy, we're going to use a signal okay? You can do Morse code on here, and through here you're essentially able to communicate with your ships on around this way. So you're sending out a message here, and then you're looking through here, to, to receive the message, right? And then you're writing it down and giving it to the officer and the chain of command that has it. Let's say the power is out, okay, and this doesn't work. Every signal in this train is south, just in case. It's basically what we're going to do is we're going to get two flags and we're going to get some position of 
apply it to these different things. So it's like an alphabet in that room. And so you're doing that, and then it's the same idea. You're, look, you're doing the sum before, and then you're looking through there to see what they're going to send. Yep. As you walk over here, you guys can see all the signal flags up above us. And we're going to go over here and look down and see the anti aircraft gun. Almost. Almost. Mm-hmm. Those 20 millimeter rounds can go through these shields, okay? This is made for shrapnel. If a plane falls near us, the shrapnel sprays out. We need to protect us against that. If most planes during the time have rounds as big as that, or even bigger, so it's gonna go through this. It can actually, it, it, it's gonna hit you regardless. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty bad situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I much prefer the other ones that we'll be seeing over here. Unless anybody else wants to try this out. Yeah. 
Mm. Over here are the 40 millimeters. Pokers. Yeah. Pokers, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want, again, if you guys want to get in this stuff and use it, I encourage it. I think it's awesome. So, really? Yeah. We, we, keep, we keep it on the day for a reason, right? That one. Yeah. Yeah, come on, come on, get in the gun. Don't fall, don't fall. Turn. Somebody's got to be his pointer. Come on. That's right. Somebody's got to help him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, is it turn? No, it's it, turn it, crank it. But it has to be two people. Well, oh. No, you, no, you can go. You can do it. Okay. So you're the you're the trainer. You're the horizontal control. Oh. If you can imagine it, you're moving give or take 14 tons right now. Okay, so, he, 7, so so he goes to your left and right, and he goes to your up and down, right? Yes. Yep, so he's, he is the up and down. Okay. He's got the vertical control. Okay. This guy has the uh, horizontal control. Okay. Where's the trigger? Where's the trigger? The pointer yeah. has the... Yeah. The pedal has a pedal, and that's the trigger. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, you, have to, you, have, you have to shoot. Yep. The, 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 that, that's a shoot? Yeah, you have to shoot. That's for the uh, Air Force only? Or you... Yeah, it's for hitting your planes. Okay. This thing shoots about give or take two and a half miles. Gotcha. So it's a, lot, it's a lot better than that. But when you, when you, when you get that close, the, the airplane can get you. Very fast. Yeah. A, it's a very yeah. It's, it is very dangerous. Like, yeah. Being able to your grip runner was a very dangerous. Ship. So we had the manual control here. Yeah. That's not necessarily how it would have been fired at the time. If you look over here, this here is a gun top or a gun director. Sorry. In this gun top, the gun director is controlled by two sailors, and they have the they have full control of the uh, forty millimeter gun. Okay. They can, they can fire it, they can turn it. It's kind of a good thing, it's kind of a bad thing, so get this. Like, like, you know, you'll skip, you go to all these other, like, Additionally, that the you want to go down below decks. We're going to take a look at uh, the depth chart. It'll be about give or take like 10 minutes. Oh, Yeah. So inside here is about 300 pounds of TNT. The idea with these is that you're, not, you're, you're trying to launch them onto something, you're not trying to sink them. Submarines have two ways of propulsion. Obviously, so you can get to the top of the water and skim around really fast with these submarines. If they're underwater, though, they use a bag, okay? It's a lot more quiet, um, it allows them to be a little more stealthy. The thing is, that bag requires a lot more energy, and it really doesn't, um, it doesn't work as fast. So the issue is, the submarines eventually have to come up and
以去集合群体，但是、哦、但是这样子就现在现在就不会爆开有那种、嗯、有那种弹珠，嗯，然后就。迫使潜艇浮上来，哦，然后，然后，呃，不是，就是迫使潜艇下沉，嗯，因为因为潜艇下沉要用电池，它不是、哦、它不是呃，就是浮上的话是可以用能量的，浮上没有电池，它、哦、电池没电了，就就就就就卡在里面出来了。哦，原来是这样啊，不是直接击毁潜艇。哦。嗯它是丢下去以后，并不是直接击毁潜艇，而是。因为潜艇，潜艇是这个原理，它要浮上来，要沉下去，要潜下去是要用电池，而且电池用完了，它充电很慢，所以它必须得要浮上来。所以当潜艇浮上来的时候，驱逐舰就可以就可以看着潜艇在哪里了，然后就丢那个炸弹，就迫使潜艇沉下去，然后就在潜艇的，因为它上来充电，它上来又上来充电，说明它已经没电池了，就迫使潜艇沉下去，不然的话就爆掉，不然就击中了。是这个样子，就迫使潜艇沉下去，然后沉下去以后，它就可能卡到绳子出不来了。OK， 这第一种。第二种还有，因为它爆开会有那个小的钢珠，啊、哦，它可能可以划伤潜艇。啊、哦，那潜艇一下沉压力很大，嗯、一点点小口就变得很大的口，就就裂了，就裂了。对，潜艇很容易被砸死。它就它就是不是它并不是直接击毁潜艇。对。我在游戏里玩的潜艇的血特别薄，一打就没。你玩的是红警吧？不是。是战是是战舰的游戏，血特别薄。它潜艇是有偷袭的性质，嗯，它防御很小，是攻击也很，攻击也很厉害，攻击很厉害，嗯，因为它偷袭嘛，对。那个印第安纳波利斯就是被潜艇弄死，弄弄沉的。哦，这是个假人，嗯，这好好可怕。Have any of you guys heard of the term Navy shower? Navy shower? No. You know what I'm talking about? No. Uh, how long do you think a Navy shower is? How long? How long do you think it is? Yeah. A couple seconds. A couple minutes. A couple minutes. Yeah, one minute. Yeah, one minute. It's sixty seconds. Okay. You have twenty seconds to rinse. Twenty seconds to apply soap. Twenty seconds to rinse off the soap. Because if you look behind you there. That there is all the water for 216 sailors to do all of their、uh, all of their bathing and in addition their shaving.、Uh -huh. So the evaporators on this ship they make water. They don't make enough water in some cases. Okay. Sometimes、uh, sometimes the priorities are given to other they're given to other、uh, parts of the ship. Okay. First priority is drinking. Okay. We need enough water to actually. Yes. All right, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You as well. You. Yeah. All right, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the tour. I.、Uh... 